Thank you for being here this afternoon. Yesterday, the Albanese government released the report from the Secretary of the Department of Home Affairs, Mr Mike Pozzullo AO, into the former government's decision to publicise the arrival of CEV 915 on election day in May. The former government had a duty to protect Australians. Instead, their actions on election day fundamentally undermined our democracy. They attacked the work of people who put on a uniform every day and fight for our country. And they undermined the integrity of an operation that is difficult, that is dangerous, and that was part way through implementation. They pressured uniformed officers to break with democratic protocols that protect all of us in this country. And in doing so, they clearly prioritise their own political interests over the national interest. The report that was released yesterday shows that uniformed border force officers, that Australian Defence Force personnel and my department acted apolitically and in fact uh, with great bravery in standing up against being asked to do something which really would have um, undermined the independence of the Australian Public Service. Uh, they are great patriots for the way that they acted and I want to put on record my commendation and the government's commendation for their actions on that day. Anyone who would be the subject of a damning report like this surely would come forward today would hang their head in shame and apologise to the Australian people for conducting themselves in such a way. But that's not what the former government has chosen to do. This morning, the former Minister for Home Affairs, Karen Andrews, came forward, told lies about her actions on that day and raised a series of further questions about the interactions of the then Prime Minister's office and her office in relation to the report that was released. The former Minister for Home Affairs, Karen Andrews, was asked this morning whether she uh, asked her department to act outside their apolitical mandate. She denied it. The report released yesterday shows the exact opposite. In fact, that the minister at the time directly asked public servants that reported to her to support the political interests of the government and in doing so undermined our democracy on the day of an election. The former Minister for Home Affairs also admitted this morning that the purpose of the publication was to address, quote, scaremongering, and that the PM personally requested that she make a statement. Now, <laughs> the minister at the time didn't stand up to the prime minister and say no. Instead, she put the acid on uniformed people that reported to her and got them to come out and make a statement. And she needs to come forward and explain why she made that decision. Finally, the former Minister for Home Affairs, Karen Andrews, said today that there was no pressure placed on the department. That is a lie. The report clearly shows that the minister at the time had her office approach the department saying the PM had requested that this statement be made. And the, the uh, report details a barrage of pressure that then went, uh, including uh, a quote from her office to the department saying a lot of people are furious because the report was not being posted fast enough. Now, um, what I would like to say to the opposition today is that you need to do better. This report shows that the former government had, after nine years, completely lost its moral compass and had completely lost the ability to distinguish between the national interest and their political interest. They need to show um, some sense of uh, regret for the actions that took place and come forward and apologise for this, not make up ridiculous lies which, uh, which are directly contradicted by the Secretary's report. The actions of the former government on election day were a profoundly disgraceful set of activities that undermined our national interest, that subverted our democracy on the day of an election. And the former government need to hang their heads in shame and come forward and apologise and explain why it is that they chose to compromise the work of Defence Force officials in this disgraceful way. Happy to take questions.
you speak of an apology, what exactly would you like to see from them moving forward? What I would like to see um, from the former government is some sense of shame about their activities. They swore an oath to protect the interests of Australians, and instead they went ahead and tried to politicise the public service, to politicise the work of people who put on a uniform every day and fight for our country. They need to show some remorse and come forward and apologise for these disgraceful actions and this betrayal of our democracy. How much of an impact do you think this happening on election day, or what extra does that add to this, mm -hmm. to this report and this Sure. I think um, the actions here would be reprehensible on any day of the year, but the fact that the former government chose to put pressure on public servants, put pressure on people in uniform and undermine our democracy on the day of an election is without precedent in Australian history. They need to show some remorse for these activities and come forward and apologise to the Australian people and to members of Border Force and the Defence Force who do so much every day to defend and protect our country. Do you think that this uh, strengthens calls for a federal ICAC with retroactive powers? Do you know who's on the phone, Tom? Yes, Henry. Oh, Henry, can, can you hold on for one sec and I'll come to your question in a moment. Sorry, could you just ask your question again? Do you think that this uh, strengthens calls for a federal ICAC mm -hmm. with retroactive powers? Yeah, okay. If we needed an example in Australian politics today of the need for a federal ICAC, then this would be it. It is completely inappropriate that the former government chose to undermine the Australian Defence Force, to undermine our democracy, on election day, they need to come forward and provide a full, detailed account of the instructions that they gave. Okay, Henry, can you go ahead with your question? Thank you. Um, I do have great concerns um, about the fate of Julian Assange. Um, this is an Australian and the Australian government is certainly um, cognizant of the issues facing his case. Okay, um, uh, that, that's my only comment on this matter at this, at this time. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, the cost of living is without doubt um, the most um, critical issue facing my constituents and facing Australians at the moment. Um, we are doing everything that we can to try to alleviate these issues. That includes um, things like um, supporting uh, a decrease to the petrol excise, um, trying to support payments to Australian households, and indeed um, trying to do some things that are targeted at the medium and long term about this problem, trying to reduce energy costs for Australians, trying to reduce childcare costs for Australians. Um, please know that we are continuing to watch this matter very, very carefully. And can I just say to Australians, I completely understand the difficulties that are being faced in your households at the moment. The Australian government is well aware of them and we're doing what we can to alleviate those burdens. Um, I've answered your question. <laughs> Okay, anything from those of you in the room? I guess just briefly, the, the Agricultural Minister yeah. implemented new biosecurity mm -hmm. measures at airports to help prevent the spread of foot and mouth disease mm -hmm. in Australia. Do you have any comments on how those have been working or any updates on any further measures that might be put in place? Sure, yeah. So, um, really concerning issues around the spread of foot and mouth disease in the region and Minister Murray Watt is working night and day to make sure we are doing everything we can at our end to address this. This includes um, putting sanitation mats into some international airports, it includes giving a million vaccines to Indonesia um, and it includes working very closely with the National Farmers Federation and other groups that uh, represent our agriculture sector. We are absolutely standing with farmers on this one and leaving no stone unturned in how we tackle this problem. Okay, all good.